Hello, this is Teresa from Whimsical Card Studio, and I'm here to welcome you to my very first uh, card series class. This has a theme to it, Alice in Wonderland, if you could not tell by the photo you're seeing in front of you right now. There are a couple of things I want to share with you before getting started, which is one, the there is a packet with the class that will have a list to all the supplies that are being used uh, during this process. You may or may not be able to substitute some different items for what I have, but if you're interested in finding the exact things, you will want to look at my post from a few days before on Patreon showing the list of class supplies. So with that said, I will start to give you a sneak peek of the cards that will be created. So I will just quickly pick up and show you each one of the cards that I'm creating during the class. And these are the actual samples after doing all the steps. I did create this, all these one time before just to get some additional practice. So, Part one is all about the backgrounds. So this is actually the shortest video in the entire four part series. The second video, which is the coloring or starting the coloring process is the longest. It's a little under an hour. So just keep that in mind as you plan your time to watch. So I'll start creating the backgrounds and every piece of paper that you'll see me using is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Just for reference, I am using Nina Siller white cardstock in the 80 pound weight. So the first thing I'm going to do with this first stencil is attach um, the cardstock to the stencil with it turned over so that it does not move around as I'm doing my ink blending. And I'm starting with squeeze lemonade and just adding that color all over the stencil. And I'm going to concentrate on make, uh, making an even coating of this color to begin with before switching to the wild honey. And when I'm using the wild honey, I'll simply be adding it mostly right around that edge and then I will pick up the other ink blending tool and I will blend the two colors together. So the overall effect is with a darker circle on the outside and a lighter layer on the inside. And this is probably one of the two simplest backgrounds used. The second background is going to be this different stencil. This is by Visible Image and it's called Distorted Chess. And I'm using Distress Oxide and Black Suit. And one of the things I would tell you is you don't want to put a whole ton of ink before you start this process because you actually want this to look almost, it's kind of like a faded black look effect. And here is the second background. The third background is going to get slightly more complicated, but not a ton so. The, on this particular stencil, it's a Harlequin stencil by the way, and also listed in the class supplies. I'm using post-it removable tape in order to mask off sections of the stencil because I'm going to be using two colors and I wanna make sure that I don't have any overlap between the two. So starting with Candied Apple Distress Oxide ink, I'm simply ink blending that on to this paper and then I will move my temporary mask to a different section down actually back at the top and then get another piece of this post-it labeling tape so that just the middle section is exposed and then I'll start ink blending with the salty ocean ink right on top of that and after that's done the only piece left will be the very bottom and that's going to be done in the red candied apple color again and the reason I'm not going to color all the way to both ends is because this panel will eventually be trimmed down and even if I colored at the end, it would get trimmed off at the end. So there is the third background. And now I've switched to the time tunnel stencil and I want to show you a tool I'm using that will be very helpful in controlling exactly where the color is placed because I'm going to be alternating between Salty Ocean and Candied Apple in coloring each of these sections. So this little tool is very helpful for those really, really tiny spaces like in this stencil without having to do 
masking, which can be a real pain to do. And also certain tools such as a mini blender sponge is still a little bit too big to get into a really tight spot like this. So in the class supply materials, I have a link to a set of inexpensive makeup brushes from Amazon. And I've used these quite a few times recently and have found that they clean up very, very easily. So I think um, that you would find them very useful, especially for a technique where you want to isolate color without having to do a lot of blending. I mean, masking. But you can easily clean off these brushes with water and a little bit of mild soap. I happen to have another tool, another brush in the set that was just slightly longer than the first one I was using. And this is a little more difficult, especially right up at the top, but it still worked out as long as I didn't get, get to going too fast and too crazy. You can keep going back to the ink pad to add more color to get it as saturated as you want. And I'll just keep continuing the process as I move around the stencil until I have this first uh, section covered. And then I will be switching to a mini sponge blending tool to bring the color all the way around the outside of the stencil. Because once you get this middle part done, then that is the hardest part. If you could say it's hard, it really isn't that difficult. Once I get to this point, I will be switching to, like I said, the sponge daubers and the rest of it actually goes really, really quickly to finish this off. And I'm going to use the same stencil in the next background, but the way that I'm applying ink will be different uh, from the way that I did this one. So same stencil, but different way to do so. And I will be using three colors instead of two when I get to that one. So when I peel back the stencil, then you'll see how cool that turned out, and it's very nice and neat. So like I said, on, on another piece of cardstock, I'm using the mini sponge daubers to swirl the color around. The Twisted Citron is the first color on the left-hand side, and I just swirl it around in the center area before switching to Peacock Feathers. And as you can see, what I'm just doing is kind of swiping on some ink near where the citron ends. And once I've gone around and added some ink, then I'm going to blend the two together using the other ink dauber for the Twisted Citron color. So I'll just keep working on it until it's blended fairly well. And then I'll switch to the final color, which is the... Um, Mermaid Lagoon and this time I'm using a full-size ink blending tool and I'm just going to start from the outside edge and draw the color in from the edge as I move around the stencil and it certainly is easier if you kind of turn the paper as you're working on it. I probably could have done that a little bit more here but do as, do as I say not as I do right? <laughs> So I'm going to pick up the sponge dauber from the second color and blend between the additional section that I added and now the reveal and we have a tricolor background. The next background is going to be for the Queen of Hearts card and I started by using just a neat blending tool and this part is really quick just adding candied apple all over the top of the stencil. And again, I'm going to be using one of the brush tools, but as you'll see, this one has a round tip on the end, which is really helpful for getting into really tiny nooks and crannies like these little skeleton heads. So I'm coloring where the eyes, the eye openings, the nose opening, and the little heart that's at the top of each one of these images. And this part just will be pretty repetitive. You'll just have to keep or often just get grab some more ink from the ink pad to make sure that you're keeping the intensity of the color constant. So you can you have a lot of control over how light or dark the application is. And as you're watching this, uh, yes, if you're already thinking this, this would be a wonderful tool to use on probably a lot of different stencils that 
have some detailed areas. And if you've ever wanted to use multiple colors on a stencil and found it very frustrating because the tools that you have to blend are so large or difficult to use, I now have a wonderful suggestion to use an alternative for doing this type of background. And I will be adding some black soot around the edges of this uh, piece, but I made a mistake and lifted up the stencil a little too soon. And what I really should have done is just left it exactly where it was. So I'm going to have a little bit of trouble getting that lined up, but you'll get the idea. So if you do it, I would say, well, one, don't use the ink, mini ink blending sponge tool, but grab the full size ink blending tool and just add a little bit of black soot around the edges before removing the stencils. So that way you have a little bit of a frame around the edge. And now for the Mad Hatter's background, we're going to be using the Tea Party Stencil by Visible Image. And I'm using these mini ink dauber tools in order to color in the cups. And I'll alternate between using Twisted Citron on some of them. And then I'll switch to the Wilted Violet and color in the other cups that I did not color with Twisted Citron. And after that, you'll notice all over the stencil there are a lot of little bubbles or circles or whatever, however you want to think of them. But I think bubbles probably makes the most sense considering these are teacups. And I will be using that same uh, little round uh, brush that I just used in the prior background. And I'm going to use that to color in circles. So I'll start with the Wilted Violet and fill in, fill in most of the circles that are closest to the green cups so that there is still some contrast. So I'm just kind of paying attention to the circles that are closest to that color cup. And then the next thing I'll do is clean off my brush. And you actually, if you do it quick enough, you can wipe them off with a baby wipe and then just dry it on a paper towel just to make sure that you get off the colors. That's exactly what I did here. It's a pretty easy tool to use and convenient when you can just wipe it off on a baby wipe and keep going. So as you see, I'm doing the opposite and adding the green color nearest all the purple cups and now we have a background so that is the conclusion of part one the backgrounds part two is the next part in the series and we'll start the coloring process see you soon